Can you see it? Thanks, John. Yep. Yes, I'm now recording. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, everyone, welcome to our breakout room one. Um, let's see. I can finish. So the programs here are Harbor UCLA, um, UC San Diego, Kaiser Permanente Southern, Phoenix Children's, and University of California Davis. And, um, and it will have opportunities to have each program present themselves. Um, for our moderators, um, for Harbor UCLA, we have Bobby um, Hatley, as well as Grace Pio, I believe, uh, uh, signed in a bit late, um, but she's with us as well. UCSD, we have Tatiana Mills Def Schmidt, who are both the chief residents. For Kaiser Permanente Southern, we have Juan Munoz and Shelly Shi. For Phoenix Children's, we had Nahi Hermandi, and I apologize if I said that wrong. Jared Kusma, and University of California Davis is Jess Wong and Carolyn Wong. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, I'm actually going to let Dr. Safuentes uh, present our program since I've already talked a little bit today. So go ahead, Dr. Safuentes. Oh, you're muted. Rule number one, don't forget to unmute. Hi, everybody. My name is Monica Cifuentes, and I'm the Associate Program Director at Harbor UCLA, and I have the honor and pleasure to work uh, with Dr. Ye. The reason why I paused was I wanted to make sure this was our slide. Um, I just have to tell you about one snafu that was kind of funny um, this afternoon as I was previewing the slides and Dr. Ye said, would you mind presenting since I'm presenting earlier? And I said, sure, let me just review our slide thinking I know everything about our program. I looked at program highlights and there were things on the list that I said, I've never heard of that. So then I decided that I was either completely clueless and had lost my mind or that there was some misinformation in our program highlights and we found out that they had put another program's information in our program highlights. So fortunately, um, we discovered that and now we're ready to go. So at Harbor UCLA, we are part of the LA County um, hospital system. Um, and we are located in the South Bay. Now, for those of you who know, know California and who are located in Northern California, you're thinking the South Bay, you are not part of us. But by South Bay in Southern California, we mean that we're south of downtown Los Angeles, we're north of the Los Angeles and Long Beach ports, we're east of some pretty well-known beaches, um, for example, um, Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, and we are basically at the end of the 110 freeway. So I hope I'm not sounding like a stereotypical Californian by mentioning freeways. Harbor UCLA is considered a small program. We have 10 residents per year, two chief residents, and that means when you come to Harbor, you become part of our pediatric Harbor family. So what about our highlights? First and foremost, I have to say that our highlight, our biggest highlight is our, res our, our residents. Um, they're an amazing group of individuals. They're committed to serving the underserved and the disenfranchised of Los Angeles County. And they are true patient advocates and they receive daily on the job training, not only in medicine, but in the importance of multidisciplinary care as well. Which leads to our second highlight, our diverse patient population. And I think everyone in the Western region can tell you if you come to the Western region, you will definitely have an opportunity to work with and the honor of treating patients from very, very diverse backgrounds. At Harbor UCLA, we're a safety net hospital. So that means we see anyone who walks through the door of our pediatric emergency department, or maybe doesn't walk through the door or whoever is brought in. So that means if you're insured, you're underinsured, or you're not insured, we will see you. Therefore, at Harbor, you'll see a wide variety of patients with common conditions, with not so common conditions, and with the rare birds that we often say, only at Harbor does a patient with X condition just walk through the door having never been diagnosed before. We are a level one trauma center as well, so you'll get a lot of experience working with our emergency department colleagues and trauma teams. And we have a separate pediatric emergency department. So that means you're not just working under the adult ER, um, you are working um, ER staff, you're working 
um, pediatric trained fellows and um, faculty as well. Also, if you're interested in teaching, you definitely have an opportunity at Harbor UCLA. Um, we always have UCLA medical students with us. And since we are in the field of David Geffen School of Medicine, um, students are an integral part of the team. Uh, they like to come to us at Harbor because they get hands-on experience and they get to take direct care of patients. And I'm certain that all of you are hopefully interested in teaching since you're coming into pediatrics. Your training at Harbor will prepare you for anything and everything. If you're interested in primary care, as you see, 50% of our uh, graduates go into primary care. If you're interested in joining an HMO, a community clinic, or even joining a group practice, we have the connections and you'll have the training to do that. If you're interested in fellowship training, we have many programs at Harbor. We also have wonderful connections with all our colleagues in the Western region and even on um, throughout the United States. But whatever you decide, um, the program prepares you for it since your experience is uh, based on a strong relationship with our faculty. And our faculty are generally interested in your personal as well as your intellectual growth. So some other important things to tell you about our program. Um, your advocacy rotation is during your first year at our program. And that uh, connects you with local elementary schools, community centers, uh, such as the Boys and Girls Club, health fairs, research centers. And of course, with the pandemic, uh, some of these activities have changed. But as one of our interns just told us, kids are amazing. They've adapted to Zoom. And one of our residents actually just gave a health class on COVID via Zoom um, with some elementary school kids while she was on this rotation. And it was pretty amazing, she said. Now, some people think county, good clinical experience, but no opportunities for research. Well, don't dismay. Oh, on campus, we have a large independent research facility. It's called the Lundquist Institute, as you see on our slide. Many of our faculty also conduct basic science research as well as clinical research on site. And our faculty are really eager to have house staff participate with them in their clinical trials. So please check out the website. It's lundquist.org, sorry. And they're very, very happy to have residents on board. Other faculty mentored projects include QI and patient safety projects. Um, and the program assigns you to participate in committee work, both on the departmental level as well as the institutional level. Your other clinical experiences besides occurring at Harbor UCLA occur at Kaiser. Um, that's mostly your newborn experience. Gardena High School is a school-based clinic. Um, you work with me since my other hat that I wear is adolescent medicine. Um, it's affiliated with um, Gardena High School is um, located not too far from the hospital. Only 40% of the students graduate from high school. It's a very high risk area and you get to meet some really amazing kids. Also, you get to go to LMU, which is Loyola Marymount University, their student health service um, as well during adolescent rotation. And we have affiliations with it's known as um, the Children's Clinic. Um, it's an HF, no, FHQ, sorry, got those, um, that acronym incorrect. Um, and finally, I think all of us will tell you that um, you can live pretty close to the beach at most of our programs. Um, but at Harbor, it's only about five miles away. Um, it's a few miles away for a living for visiting, for exercise, for anything. So we just invite you to put on your face mask, go for a run, go for a walk, meet with friends. It's a great place and we really value your well-being as well. So there's lots to do to visit, to see in Los Angeles. So we invite you to please come to our website to see us remotely and to join one of our socials. Thank you so much and good luck on your journey. It's gonna be a great one. Thank you. Next up is UCSD, uh, Radies Children's. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Sawyer. I'm the program director at UCSD and I'm gonna share this presentation with my chiefs. I'd first of all like to thank uh, the Future Peds Residence Group for putting this forum together. I think it's an excellent idea and thank all the students for joining us. Uh, let me first introduce myself. I'm a Peds Infectious Disease Physician at UCSD 
I've been at this institution a long time. I feel like I have to explain the picture that my chief residents chose because I'm holding a teddy bear. And that's because I became a grandfather last year for the first time, courtesy of my pediatric daughter who just finished her residency and fellowship. And she keeps me from doing crazy things with the program. We consider ourselves a middle-sized program. You can see the numbers there. We traditionally attract residents from all over the country, and that's one of the things we value to help create diversity. We have the relatively unique situation of being the only provider of tertiary quaternary care pediatrics in San Diego County and in the whole very bottom half of California, which is a very large population. We also draw patients from across the border in Tijuana, Mexico. So all collectively, we have around 5 million patients potentially to draw from, which means as a resident, you end up seeing pretty much everything that can possibly happen in a population of that size. We have very strong academics. We have over 250 faculty altogether. We're in the last six or seven years have been in the top 10 of pediatric programs when it comes to NIH funding. Very strong genomics and the microbiome research, which I think are the two major black boxes of your generation of, of pediatricians. Uh, we have to figure out what to do with all that information. Uh, just like the Harbor program, about half of our uh, graduates go into primary care, half go into fellowship after residency. And we've been quite successful in landing people in all the fancy highfalutin fellowships that there exist, including back on the East Coast, if you insist on leaving. Although I, think I will speak for all of our West Coast programs. I think if you come to the West Coast, you may be stuck here forever <laughs> because it's a great place to live. We send you out into the community. We've listed some of our sites there. I'll just highlight that all of our residents go to an FQHC for a month of outpatient experience. We also send you to the Navy hospital. We, there is a Navy training program here in the military system. They take care of dependent children of Navy personnel, and it gives you a different perspective and a different uh, patient group to, to interact with. And we send everyone to Kaiser, just like uh, the Harbor program. And I think if you're gonna practice medicine in the West, you need to understand Kaiser and how it works. And not only that, they're a, a big provider of jobs for pediatricians. The last thing I'll say is it may be obvious, but we are sitting on the busiest international border in the world. And that gives us the opportunity to give you a global health experience without leaving the comfort of your bed at night. We have a program right across the border in Tijuana in a middle tier developing country. So that's a unique advantage that we're lucky enough to have. With that, I'm gonna, oh, I forgot my last thing, which I always highlight in my in-person orientation is that if you're into beer, we have over 140 <laughs> microbreweries in San Diego, and we are always in the top 10 list of cities uh, for the best beer in the country. So don't keep that in mind. And with that, let me turn it over to my chief residents. Hey, everyone. Um, we just wanted to introduce ourselves. We're actually two thirds of the PEDS <laughs> chief residents. My name is Kimmy and this is Kirsten. Hi. Um, and neither of us are actually from California. So we weren't originally from out west. We were both actually lifers in another state. So I'm originally from North Carolina, spent my whole time there. I'm Kirsten from Michigan. Yeah, and so, you know, coming out west, one of the things that really worried us was like the sticker shock of it all, especially from the lower cost of living kind of areas that we were from. But one of the cool things about um, San Diego in particular is that there's a lot of different smaller neighborhoods. It's relatively spread out. Um, so we've all been able to kind of thrive here, travel, eat out, go out wherever, whenever our schedules allow it without any kind of issues financially. So um, we're pretty, very well compensated and we're also unionized with our residents and fellows. So that kind of helps to make are um, like salaries and things like that pretty robust. And one of the things I came from, from coming from Michigan, the PEDS program there is pretty large. And so I wasn't quite sure what I wanted in a PEDS program. Um, but I felt like um, being in a medium-sized program gave me some of the perks of being in a bigger program, but still kept that family feel, which I think um, Dr. Sawyer and Allison do a great job of fostering. 
and Dr. Sawyer already touched on it a little bit, but um, we really are super blessed to work in healthcare in a lot of different settings, especially like for those of us who aren't familiar with California, Kaiser is like a really cool experience for us. Um, so it's really great that we can work there. We can work at Family Health Centers, one of our the largest like FQHCs in the area. And then we also work with residents from a lot of different programs. So we have great partnerships with the Navy. We also work with like Scripps Family Health. And so you kind of have this really large um, network of people that you can like connect with and hang out with outside of your home program. Um, and we bond a lot with our UCSD colleagues too. So it's just kind of a lot of like-minded people who get to you know, enjoy San Diego together. And in our last little minute we have, we just wanted to give a plug for living in Southern California, you can't beat it. As Harvard <laughs> UCLA said, there's the beach, there's lots of like fantastic things to do in Southern California. Um, I can't, I mean, calling my mom from the dog beach in, in January is like, I feel bad. So. Yeah. Um, it's great here. There's lots of music festivals, all kinds of things, and you're a drive away from the mountains. You can go to wineries. Las Vegas is only five hours, so you got a lot of options. Or one hour flight if you don't want to drive. <laughs> um, so basically, we hope that you all will consider San Diego. We wish that we could come and have you guys come out in person and enjoy the beautiful, always perfect weather and our amazing beaches and foods and breweries, but hopefully for the next time. And we hope that we will see your application to meet you someday. Thank you, guys. Next up is Kaiser, Southern California. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh May. I'm one of the associate program directors at Kaiser. I'm joined with uh, Amita Ganji, who's just dropped by to say hi as well, one of our other excellent APDs. Hi, um, everyone. On behalf of uh, Dr. Waldron, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, she also wanted to extend her welcome to everybody, our program director, uh, who is filled with warmth, kindness, and a real emphasis and expertise in wellness. Um, so we just thought we'd take a few minutes to just share a few of the highlights about our program, the Kaiser Permanente Southern California uh, Pediatric Residency Program. And um, basically a, a couple of the other programs have alluded to Kaiser, so maybe just to start by spending a quick second on the Kaiser Permanente system. We're a large uh, internalized HMO system that takes care of 4 million plus members in the greater Southern California area, and we uh, share with other programs in Southern California the wealth of diversity of patient population and all sorts of uh, individuals from all sorts of socioeconomic backgrounds and diversity that I think really makes a rich training environment. Um, we're based at the Los Angeles Medical Center, which is in the heart of Hollywood, and you know, 20, 30 minutes from the beach, close to mountains, and with a, with a short drive, you can be anywhere in Los Angeles and enjoy the breadth of opportunities there. And our Los Angeles Medical Center serves as our tertiary uh, medical center within our system. Uh, we take care of approximately a million children throughout Southern California. And we uh, really highlight the, the benefits of that tertiary nature by getting uh, really the, uh, the benefits of a large catchment area for all the unusual zebra sorts of medical issues to learn about that are important to see in residency, but also the wealth of experience of having a excellent primary care based education as well with outstanding clinical continuity clinics and really our continuity clinics serve the community with which we live in. Um, so it's a very nice balanced uh, clinical exposure and I think it provides an outstanding uh, environment to really, uh, you know, really develop as a pediatrician. Um, we are a, a smaller program. We have eight residents on average a year. Um, we like to think of ourselves as a tight-knit family and the culture of our program is hopefully very inclusive. We're uh, very responsive to resident feedback and, and do our best to, to really cultivate that culture amongst our faculty and certainly our administration and, and leadership as well. We're a, a long-standing program with lots of stability and uh, have a decades of uh, experience in the graduate medical education experience. Um, we do offer um, all sorts of different types of experiences. Uh, we do take care of some, we do take uh, advantage of some of our community partnerships as well to provide opportunities outside of Kaiser, such as at the emergency room at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and other community partnerships to um, certainly give our residents training in a variety of settings. And so I think most of our residents find that to be a, a really beneficial experience as well. Um, we really provide a, a diverse training, and so about a third of our residents uh, over the last number of years have entered some sort of fellowship. Um, so we do have a, a similar split of um, those who go on to an additional training versus those that are um, 
uh, stay in primary care pediatrics. And, and for those of, of you all thinking about perhaps the next step in your career, a little over half of our um, uh, residents over the last 10 years have stayed within the Kaiser Permanente system in terms of future practice once they're done with either their residency uh, and or their fellowship. Um, so those, some of those are, are our highlights. Um, just to take a moment in terms of research opportunities as well, we um, have recently opened a new medical school and certainly that's facilitating the culture of research and enhancing the opportunities for research in, in, in the education and medical education space. Um, but in addition, we have a large uh, electronic medical record system that is a treasure trove for opportunities for answering clinical questions, doing clinical research, and really um, a, a DNA in our organization of preventative medicine as well that lines up nicely with um, many of the goals of being a pediatrician. And so um, those are just a, a couple of highlights of our program. I'd like to thank you guys all for spending your Friday evening um, with us and learning about the programs. I would echo other people's comments about the uh, wealth of opportunities on the Western part of America and, and encourage you all to learn more, to reach out uh, to our program, visit our website. Um, we have a whole host of folks here that we will this year have to meet virtually, but we'd love to share our passion and enthusiasm about uh, medical education in our program and wish all of you the best of your in your journey as you um, move forward with your residency application process. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Phoenix Children's. Excellent. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you um, again for uh, for putting this together, Future Peace Res, and uh, for all of you guys to get on here and uh, be a part of this. I also thank um, my chief resident, um, Nahid, who has joined us, and we have a rising chief. Um, Jared is also with us and um, helping support me today. But I, I do feel like I'm maybe the the one kid that's different on the block here. I guess I'm not from California. So this is the one program that we're not going to talk about California too much. Um, but a couple things that I wanted to highlight about Phoenix, and our program, you know, Phoenix is one of the fastest growing cities in the country. Likewise, our medical community is the same way. We are a city that did not have a medical school in, in it as of about 20 years ago, we now have five medical schools in the city. We are the only pediatric training site in our city. So um, that gives us a, a great opportunity to engage with all sorts of learners from a variety of medical schools. That means that as faculty members, we have appointments at five different medical schools and gives us the opportunity to use resources from each of those, each of those centers. Um, we are a large program. Um, we're currently at 34 categorical residents per year, uh, but we also support a child neurology uh, residency and a, a robust med peds residency program. We are in the process of expanding our residency to, to be up to 40 categorical pedi pediatric residents per year over the next three years. Despite, despite our size, we still have a, uh, a family-like feel. I think that's in part because we, we utilize four different centers within our community to uh, provide education to our residents. Our primary site, of course, is Phoenix Children's, which is the large you know, quaternary uh, care center. It's a level one trauma center. Um, and we, as a pediatric emergency medicine physician, you know, we see about 100,000 visits per year in our emergency department. So it's a, it's a busy um, center that you would expect for many of these other places that we've talked about on the West Coast. And of course, our catchment area is the entire state, which is, which is really great. The other program, or the other parts of our program are um, Valley Wise, which is really our county health. It's a safety net hospital. And that's probably the second most, residents spend about the second most time at that facility. And then we use two other sites for primarily for um, neonatal intensive care uh, rotations. 
but the beauty is that in having these four different sites, it kind of breaks up our residency into smaller groups. And so they can have a sort of more intimate setting where you get to know a smaller group of residents. And then we rotate those and mix those that so over time you have a greater feel for um, the people in your class and the people in the classes above you. The, uh, the other thing is all of these sites, you might think in a city as big as Phoenix, right? That uh, it could be challenging getting to each of these, but they're all actually within close proximity. They're within about two miles of each other. And you know, since this is the West Coast, no one's shoveling snow. Your commute's the same every day. You can get there, no problem. Um, the couple of the other things that I would highlight is uh, like uh, others have said, diverse uh, patient populations um, and some unique patient populations with proximity to the border and then Native American reservations, uh, as well as a growing refugee uh, population. It's also, this bodes well for our advocacy program as well. Uh, we're a capital city, so in terms of um, having an impact in the healthcare delivered to children around the state, we right at our doorstep. And then, you know, although maybe maybe not, uh, you know, quite as temperate as uh, as San Diego gave us, but we still manage a, a mere 300 days of sunshine per year uh, with uh, hiking and water activities right outside our door. In fact, oftentimes you'll find me run out uh, and take a hike between meetings and come back. So uh, some of the unique things we, we have for our program uh, are uh, a resident longitudinal experience where our residents are given a, a second half day of clinic that they can spend in whatever field of interest they're interested in, even things that don't have clinic, like the ICU or emergency medicine, and help set them up for a, a career in um, their subspecialty training, where about two thirds of our residents end up in subspecialty training. And then, uh, like uh, Dr. Sawyer said as well, we, uh, there are a lot of patients, there are a lot of people that like, once they come out to the West Coast, this is where they stay, even if we're not quite on the coast probably close to two thirds of our uh, residents end up staying in Arizona or coming back to Arizona after um, fellowship training. So um, it's, always a, it's, it's always a good thing in our program and around our hospital to see all of the familiar faces that, that we have trained and, and uh, come back and, and participate in continuing the education of our residents. With that, I will move it on. Great, thank you. Thank you. Next one is University of California Davis. Hi, I'm Sue Ting Lee. I'm the program director for the University of California Davis. And I have, you've met uh, Laura Kester earlier, Laura, one of my associate program directors. And then I have two fabulous chiefs on as well. So Jeff, Jess Wong and Caroline Wong, Wong there. So wave, wonderful. So we are in um, Sacramento. So for those of you less familiar with California, um, Sacramento is the capital of California. We're actually one of the most diverse um, cities in the nation. We are the third most diverse city in the nation, um, right behind um, uh, Stockton, which is right south of us, and Oakland, which is right um, uh, west of us. Um, so one of the most diverse uh, cities in um, in the nation, so wonderful to come here and um, both for the diversity of the uh, location as well as the diversity of the patients that we see. Um, one of the wonderful things about um, UC Davis is really our tight-knit family. We have 39 pediatric residents, so that's 13 a year. We think of our program, so not too small and not too big. Um, so we're able to, our residents are able to really develop really close relationships with each other, as well as with our faculty. I, um, even though I assign a uh, resident um, and faculty advisor to each of our residents, I also encourage them to find as many mentors as they can. I don't think you can have enough mentors. Um, I love to think about as um, you would find mentors that are in your scholarly area, that are in your career mentor, a life mentor. And one of the really nice things is you really get to know our faculty in our program, and all of them want to teach, and all of them are invested in you and your well-being. 
helping you figure out what your career choices are. I'm a pediatric hospitalist, um, one of the most recently boarded and new subspecialties there. Um, our residents um, do a lot with um, what they, um, kind of what their passion is. So I think, um, and our residents believe that all pediatricians are child advocates. And you will see in the Western region that a lot of us think this, and we think this is incredibly important. So Sacramento is the capital of California, which offers lots of wonderful opportunities for advocacy. I think child health is extremely important. All of our residents do a one month required rotation in their first year, rarely learn about um, asset-based community development, really learn about child health, um, um, uh, health equity, social justice. They also um, do unique time um, learning about legislative advocacy. We are right there, so they will do legislative advocacy there. We learn about social media advocacy. That's the, really the next step. Um, and so our residents have testified in front of the California um, Senate. They write op-ed pieces that are um, published in um, newspapers locally, um, as well as San Francisco Chronicle. Um, they've also um, been uh, doing blog posts. They've done their own podcast. Um, they're really involved. And we would love, if you're interested, to kind of stretch your boundaries a little bit, be that advocate for children that you want to be, and learn how to do that with us. Um, residents do a scholarly project. And that's really in the area that they are amazingly passionate about, right? So you're going to find that in residency, whether that's in medical education, community health and advocacy, quality improvement, or research. We have the faculty that would help mentor you through this. We give you protected time in order to do this. We have you do works in progress sessions and get feedback from our residents and faculty to work on this. And then you present at the end um, to all of our interested residents and faculty. Uh, we celebrate with you whether that, that that's um, presenting your work regionally and nationally, publishing your work, um, uh, and uh, really changing the world. And that's what we'd love to do. One of the new initiatives that Dr. Kester and Dr. Owen are helping us with is this new longitudinal integrated curriculum that I'm super excited about um, that um, maybe uh, if you guys want to ask a little bit more about her, her with that later, it would be really great. So we, um, our uh, preliminary name is the Change Lives Curriculum. So it's community health, advocacy, anti-racism, engagement, justice, and equity. So super excited about seeing that integrated throughout our entire curriculum, through our case management conferences, our journal clubs, our um, didactics, um, and hands-on learning as well. Sacramento, really diverse capital of California. It's the farm to fork. We were known before as the um, city of trees and it's beautiful with the number of trees here. We're also the farm to fork capital. So really um, all the good food here, that's really farm to fork right here. Um, outdoor um, activities nearby, I love outdoor activities. I'm from Southern California. I went to residency in Seattle and you know I love the outdoors. And so we're two hours from Tahoe, we're an hour from Napa wine country and a couple hours from the Bay Area. So wonderful place to live and to be. Um, about 40% of our residents um, decide on fellowship um, and that's before PHM became like hospital medicine became a fellowship. So now I think it's gonna be higher than that because several of them went directly to PHM before. Um, and our uh, residents, are, our graduates are advocates. They've done, uh, made their own podcasts, they've testified, they've published op-eds, they're regional leaders in that, um, American Academy of Pediatrics, they're scholars, they've presented nationally, they presented um, uh, published scholarship. We, would, we are there to support you, whatever it is that you wanna do um, and think about. Um, our, uh, we are an academic center um, and we have a huge catchment area. So our diversity runs not only in the diversity, racial and ethnic diversity, but also like our huge catchment area. So we serve all the way to the Oregon border, all the way to Nevada, all the way south to central California. We have urban, underserved, we have suburban, we have rural. Um, we have a couple of FQHCs that we are close knit with. So we have a couple of continuity clinics in our federally qualified health centers, um, Sacramento County um, Health Center, Sacramento Native American Health Center, working with our refugee populations as well. So we're really excited. We would hope that you consider us as 